123. Wonderful. Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, Isaiah 9, 6. The Alpha and the Omega, Revelation 1, 8, Revelation 22, 13. The Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world, John 1, 29. And He'll take away the sin you got in your life right now. If you're to give it to Him. If you'll repent, say, Lord Jesus, you are the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. But we've got to be able to give it to Him. Do we believe that what the Word of God says about Jesus is true? We must stand on this rock. It wasn't Peter that he built the church on. There's many people in, the, in Catholicism and others that say, that means Peter. He built his church on Peter. But if Peter fell short many times, if Christ would have built his church on Peter, yeah. we'd be in trouble. Because oh, yeah. Peter denied him three times. Yeah. Hello. It was the foundation that Jesus is the Son of God, and that's the rock. That's the rock that should, we should be grounded and rooted on. And against that, the gates of hell will not prevail. Amen? Amen. Amen? It doesn't matter what this nation looks like and how far this nation goes down, because this nation is going down, you can tell. Islam's coming in. People are perverted in their thinking. Perverted politicians. We've got all kinds of things happening right now, but guess what? If you'll stand on that foundation... Christ the solid rock, we stand, all other ground is sinking sand. I know you all heard that. It doesn't matter how angry the devil is at you. Bless God, you've got the Holy Spirit. First John says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. But you must stand on that foundation because I'm telling you, it's being attacked right now. The reason why this nation is being attacked so much is because this nation was supposed to be a city on a hill. When them pilgrims came, to Plymouth Rock, they got down on their knees and they prayed and they committed themselves and everything in this land to Jesus Christ. Amen. It wasn't to Allah, it wasn't to Buddha, it wasn't to the 3,000 Hindu gods, it was to Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter what they say. <laughs> and we got perverted politicians that's now trying to pervert that and say, well, it just means we can serve any God. And... No, it is Jesus that they committed this land to and Jesus blessed this land. And this land, praise God, the people in it started spreading the gospel through the whole world. And for a long time, for 200 something years, she was a city on a hill. But now she's growing dark. But when she grows dark, the church ought to grow what? Brighter. Hallelujah. As darkness falls and takes over, we are the light of the world. We're supposed to be the salt and the light. Salt is a preservative. We are to preserve the word of the living God. Because they're trying to strip it out of everything. They're trying to take it out of the courtrooms. If you take morality out, what comes in next? Lawlessness. Sin. And that's what's coming in. And we see it and many people are afraid. And I'm telling you, for the last few days, I've been grieved looking at the TV and the news and, and seeing the events that surrounded 9-11. That's hard. We've got 3,000 lives that were torn up, that were killed. Not only in the towers, but in different other places. And we see... What's even worse is the way they spin it to make Christians look crazy and Islam look like a religion of peace, even though they attack us. How are they spinning this? Does it not grieve your heart that American lives were lost and some of those people might not have been saved? That means they were lost eternally. That grieves me, but guess what? The Word of God says, weeping may endure through the night, but joy comes in the morning. You can know that the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. The church will be here until Jesus calls us home. It doesn't matter what kind of laws they pass. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. With this, our gospel says this in Colossians 2, 8 through 10. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men and after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. For in Him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in Him, which is the head of all principality and power. That means you are complete. You've got all the necessary parts. <laughs> Everything you need is in Jesus Christ. Isn't that amazing? You can really get excited knowing that everything you need is in Jesus. You can get on your knees. If you need your lights turned on, praise God, you can say, Lord Jesus, I need help. And you watch what will happen. I promise you, I've done it before. He is miraculous. He is a miraculous God. Of course, we've got to put our hands to something. Of course, we've got to work. But guess what? He will bless the work of your hands. Amen. 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 Galatians 1.8 says, But though we 
or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you that which you have that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that you have received, let him be accursed. Many people are trying to preach another gospel these days. They claim to know Jesus. They claim Jesus, but they will not stand that he is the only begotten Son of God. They will not stand on the rock that he built his church on. We must stand on that rock. When all else fails, that will never fail. Jesus Christ will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. Once you've allowed Him into your heart, into your life, He'll be with you to the end. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. He's raising up mighty soldiers right now. Go with me to Judges chapter 7. I asked the Lord to confirm this message. <coughs> and I don't know if you ever watched TV. But last night I was just kind of tired of studying. and I broke away from studying and clicked on the TV just to kind of sit there. And old Billy Graham was on. And I done prayed, Lord, I need you to confirm this message. I don't like giving any message that the Lord doesn't confirm because I don't want it to be out of my mind, out of my flesh, or out of some teaching. I want it to be the Lord. And the first things out of his mouth when he stood up in that pulpit was Judges chapter 6. And this is uh, about Gideon. Gideon's army. We're going to Judges chapter 7, though. <laughs> well, Judges chapter 6 talks about Gideon. I'll bring us up to date. At this time in Israel's history, the Israelites had been handed over, the whole nation, to the, her enemies. The Midianites and those surrounding had come in and they would just devour their crops and everything they had. Does that not look familiar now? The United States used to be protected. There was like a bubble over everybody. Some secular people say it was because of the oceans. Oh, we had oceans all around us and they'd have to sail over here and do anything to us. No. The Lord Jesus Christ protects His own. Believe me. But when a nation sins against God by committing all kinds of abominations, guess what happens? That nation's spiritual truth is handed over. And as that nation is handed over, God's people suffer. And so Gideon was one of God's children, but he was suffering here because of the nation that is sinned against God. It says it in the Word of God. God handed them over. Why do we think all these things are becoming more prevalent? We get mad, we fight against it, but yet many times the same people that are fighting against the Islam and the administration we have now, they will not repent and come to Jesus Christ and look in the mirror and see their own wickedness. My goodness, we vote on people that say abortions are good. We kill thousands and hundreds of thousands of babies especially since abortion came into being, and yet we think God doesn't care about that. No big deal. We're under grace. Let's just do it. We, we make laws saying that uh, anything goes now.